Yeah, I gotta work. I gotta get these claims out. Um, but I was led to um compelled to just share um some things that helped me start my medical billing business. Just just a random chat. Nothing dire, nothing in like a particular order. It's just me talking to you as if I was talking to a homie that said that they was thinking about starting their medical billing business. So my name is Kat and I am the owner of Superior Medical Consulting, where we provide superior medical billing solutions for your private practice. I am a certified professional coder, certified professional medical auditor, and a medical biller. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about some things that I feel like helped me um, start my medical billing business, helped me along in my journey. And, you know, some of these things are, you know, like business oriented, but some of these things are just stuff that we all need. Um, so when I first decided that I wanted, so I've been on this wealth building journey for a while now. And, um, you know, I came from, we all say we came from nothing, but I'm not going to discredit my mom like that. My mom was a hardworking woman. Um, she is a hardworking woman. She has six kids, single mom, raised on the west side of Chicago. And like we came from low income housing um, and she just wanted to provide the best that she could. And so um, what I've learned from my mom is that <clears throat> one, we need a community in order to raise up our children. Um, and so she absolutely did that. Like whenever, you know, she felt like she needed help, she was not afraid to ask someone to, you know, go out there and talk to people to get them involved, her and her best friend. They kind of like stuck together and they raised their children together. Um, what well, one one had, the other one had. They never left each other out. Um, her sip, she would employ her siblings to, you know, help out. And I say that because um, even though we live in low income, you know, neighborhoods or whatever, um, she sent me to private high school. And when um, so I, I got I don't know if this is, you know, kind of um, typical and, you know, in the typical. I don't know if this is typical, but in our area, um, you know, most kids went to grammar school, high schools um, in their neighborhoods. Um, so my mom really didn't like our neighborhood high, uh, grammar school. So we got bussed out to a different grammar school, which was a little bit better, you know, than the typical neighborhood school. When I graduated from grammar school, because I guess people saw that I was just like smart. Um, my mom wanted to capitalize off of that. So she did not want me to go to just any old public high school, even though there was a lot of good public high schools around. She, um, you know, fell in love with this private school that she heard about and she wanted me to go, but it was expensive. It was, you know, it was like $500 a month and that was way more than our rent. We didn't even have a car. We didn't even have a house phone, you know, so asking a single mom with six kids that worked three jobs to come out of pocket for $500 a month was a lot. And so what she did was she um, asked her siblings to help out and everybody kind of pitched in and help pay my tuition per month. So that's how I got through high school. I effed around and ended up getting pregnant while I was in high school and had to leave my school my last year. So I went to you know this high school for the first three years and my last year I was pregnant. They didn't allow pregnant teens to be in the high school. So I ended up having to go to an alternative school and end up graduating early. Um, it kind of had me reflect on life and I realized, oh dang, like, you know, how I disappointed these people that like took their hard earned money because they believed that I was going to be something like spectacular. They took their hard earned money to help me, you know, get me through school. And I just, this is what I did with it. Um, you know, so, um, that taught me a lot. Uh, that taught me a lot. Like I was, even though I probably didn't show it, I was really disappointed in myself. I was disappointed that, um, I didn't fall through, but at the end of the day, I still, like, I, my confidence never shook on who I was as a person. Like I knew that 
I was somebody that had these big ambitions. I wanted to be a doctor. I felt like I was going to do that. I felt like I was going to go to college and be a doctor. And even though I had this baby, I felt like that I was still going to make something of myself. Needless to say, I'm not a doctor. Um, I did go to college. I did like try out to be pre-med. Life happened. Um, that's a whole different story. I guess if you're interested in that, that journey, why I dropped out of pre-med, why I dropped out of college, I can make a video about that, but that's not central to the, it is, but it's not real central to this story. Um, but anyway, I still try to figure out what I wanted to do that was related into the medical field that will help me to be successful. Um, so I tried nursing. I didn't like that. It was too too gory for me, too much blood. And it was just too much. I had some experience in nursing homes that I would, CNAs, y'all are the goats because I would not, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. And so um, I started looking up like what, what, what's in the medical, prof what, what did I Google? Like, uh, careers in the medical field that gets paid as much as nurses. <laughs> That's what I Googled. And one of the things came up was health information management. So I decided to switch my major to health information management um, and try to take on that. Within health information management, we got um, like a course in like medical billing and stuff like that. Now, my sister had went to school for medical billing, but it didn't register to me that that's what she was doing. She went to school for a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, and it, it just wasn't for her. So she quit. So I didn't like kind of correlate that with this course that I took in school. So um, that that's neither here nor there. I didn't finish that. <laughs> so but I did like go out and try and start getting jobs like in the medical field. So I became like a, you know, an adjudicator for claims. And then that led me to get my medical billing bit, uh, career going. Um, and then during my, during my time as a biller, I fell in love or felt interested in coding. And then I went ahead and took my CPT, CPC exam and I became a coder. And the majority of my career, I was a coder. Um, and so um, with that, it just kind of helped me um, along my way into this path that I'm at now, which is starting my um, medical billing business um, just just outside of working in a hospital or a clinic. And so I, the things that helped me to build my business was like just understanding you and who you are as a person. Um, because like, if you allow failures or incompletions or things of that nature to kind of deter your journey and if you feel it as defeat, um, like you will let, allow it to get the best of you. Now I gave you a little bit of my background cause I wanted you to know that I'm a quitter <laughs> at a lot of things. Like I would start stuff and, and then if it doesn't go as fast as I wanted to go or as great as I wanted to go, I will tend to quit. But the crazy thing about me is I always end up circling back to what it is because I learned lessons. And I think that every time we do something, it prepares us without us realizing it, it prepares us for something. So me going to that private high school prepared me for college. Like I didn't want to go to that high school, but that high school taught, they, they, the curriculum was college level. So by the time I did go to college, college was pretty easy for me. Now, had, you know, life happened, like my mom got sick, we was homeless, like things of that nature. Had that stuff not happened to me, um, I'm sure I probably would have finished college because I would have had nothing that stopped me. But when life started happening, I just couldn't function. So, but it never left me. It never left me that I, I wanted to be a doctor. I want to be in the medical field. It never left me. All of that passion transmitted into eventually becoming a medical biller and then all that stuff that was for all the college courses that I took became familiar and it kind of fed into like what I was doing then I'm like man this is this is eerie this is a familiar feeling like how did I how, how would I have guessed that you know working taking classes and you know health information management was going to correlate down the line to me, you know, being a medical biller, to me being a coder, how how would I know that the jobs, the clinics that I worked at 
How would I know me talking to having to take these provider meetings was going to prepare me to having to go into these medical providers offices asking them if I if they want to outsource their medical billing, um, hitting up their emails, asking them if they want to outsource their medical billing, giving me the confidence that I can speak to a provider, you know, and have the audacity to go in there and say, give me all your financials and let me handle your financials. I didn't know that that's what that was preparing me for. So like all of all of those things was just coming together, helping prepare me to be a medical biller, a medical billing business owner without me even realizing that it was. Um, and then just networking and, sh you know, showing up when nobody else was showing up for, for myself, you know, learning stuff on my own, being self-taught. I, I, I took the CPC as a self-paced course. I didn't go into a college and learn how to be a coder. I didn't take an online course with an instructor on how to be a coder. It was me in this book reading every single night on how to code this, on why these codes are necessary. Like I taught, I taught myself with AAPC's curriculum to do this. Um, so uh, those things that helped me start my business was preparing me without me even knowing me having the 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 gusto for lack of a better term me having the audacity to go out there and to set my mind on something not real not knowing how it was going to turn out at the end but starting somewhere helped me and to keep it linear um to get to this end point it's just this journey has just been amazing so yeah, I I don't know. I just it just helped me. That that's just some of the things that, you know, helped me to um to start my business. Like it helped me to realize that I can do this. If I'm a self-taught, self-paced taught person, um, I can teach myself how to run a business. I can teach myself how to, you know, make sure that my providers are satisfied with my work. I can teach myself how to, you know, start an LLC, how to construct a business, how to, you know, figure out how to submit a claim to an insurance company, figure out how to talk to, you know, a, a, a doctor, a provider to get them to hand over their financials to me. Like I, I, I'm able to do that all because I learned from every aspect of my journey and I never lost sight of the goal. My goal was to be in healthcare. My goal was to I wanted to get paid like a doctor, but, you know, getting paid like a nurse is cool, too. So, like, I wanted to, you know, just I, I needed my background is healthcare, and I was not going to stray for that. Even though I didn't get to my ultimate destiny, I'm working with the people that I wanted to be like. It's still a win for me. So all that helped. So. I just wanted to, you know, talk to you about, um, you know, a few things that I felt like that helped me start my medical billing business. Like I said, it's not something like A to Z. I have plenty of other videos um, on my channel that explains, you know, how to get started, steps that you needed to take. But I thought this was also as important because, you know, some of us don't take the conventional route. We don't know what we want to do in the start. Um, it just happens to end up that way and it happens to end up that way beautifully. You know, like it's just, it seems like it's a mess while you're in it, but at the end, it all turns out to be like a beautiful tapestry. And that's kind of how my journey to medical, uh, owning my medical billing business is. So if you are interested in starting a medical billing business, I do have a step-by-step, -step, um, 11 steps that you, that I took to open my medical billing business. I'll put that video here on the screen for you. Um, and I thank you so much, especially if you watch until this point. I thank you so much for listening in. Um, I'm so proud of you for taking the steps to start your medical billing business. And um, if you have any questions, um, please leave them in the comments below. I will definitely um, answer those questions or try to get the uh, resources for you to get those questions answered. And until next time. I want you to take care and have a successful business. I'll see you in the next video.